Hello and welcome everyone. I would like to thank you for joining today's webcast, which is the last episode of the series, What's New in Pure Variance 6.0. This episode focuses on the new Pure Variance Connective for Cold Beamer. My name is Shivani Hegde, working as a field application engineer at Pure Systems, and I will be the moderator for today's webcast. I'd now like to introduce Rachna Ash, who is our presenter for the day who is working in the areas of field application engineering and consulting and is sharing her knowledge about PLE and pure variance in tutorials, trainings, and workshops to help our customers with their journey towards systematic variant management approach. This is an overview of all the episodes of the series, What's New in Pure Variance 6.0. Today is the last episode where we look at the new Pure Variance Connector for Code Beamer. Based on a simple example, uh, we will walk you through its capabilities. Moreover, all the upcoming webcast details will be announced on our website soon. So if you want to register for the upcoming website uh, or webcast, you can check it out on our website. You can also watch the recordings of our past webcasts on our Pure Systems YouTube channel. And if you have any questions during the session, please feel free to post them in the chat. Only our webcast team will be able to see your questions. We will collect them and answer them at the end during the Q&A session. And if you have any, if you have any open questions left, we will contact you afterwards to follow up. With this, I would now like to hand it over to Rachna. OK, so thank you, Shivani. Uh, before I start with the demonstration, I would first like to let you know some of the benefits as to why should you be using product line engineering for Code Beamer. First off, systematic and efficient reuse. So when we have systematic and efficient reuse, it leads to high use rate and lesser errors. Secondly, consistent reuse across the tool borders and asset types. So while using product line engineering for Code Beamer, you can have a consistent reuse of all of your assets throughout the different tools that you're using. It needs lower maintenance and therefore leads to a shorter time to the market. Moving on, our tool integration supports mapping to Code Beamer assets, a preview of what will your variant specific asset look like, and last but not the least, generating the variant specific asset. Now, I will first uh, show you how do we actually restrict our superset requirements. So superset requirements is the 150% uh, specification document that you would have built in CodeBeamer. So as you can see here on the left hand side, I have my 150% superset requirement specification document. This specification document consists of all the requirements or specifications which are variable as well as all the ones which will be common to all of your variants. On the right hand side, you can see that we have the into pure variance integration. Here you also are able to see the feature model that you would have built in pure variance. Now let's start with restricting the requirements. So I will first pick a requirement and then click on the restriction icon with the in-tool integration and start restricting this specific requirement using the logical operators uh, available. And with the dropdown, I would select USA as a feature and then click on apply. By doing so, what I have done is this requirement 1.1 has now been restricted to two features, USA or Canada. That means every time in your variant uh, model you select USA or Canada, this specific requirement will then become a part of your 100% variant specific document. Now, moving on, we will now have a look at how can we add calculations to this requirement specification document? So in order to do that, first, as you can see, we have a requirement over here, which says the LED pulse frequency shall be above 100 kilohertz. In this case, we already have a value, but now I would like to show you how can you let pure variance pull a value in here. In order to do that, I have added square brackets over here. 
these square brackets are nothing but a syntax for pure variance to understand that a calculation needs to be inserted in this requirement. Now I will select this requirement and make use of the calculation functionality in the in tool integration, wherein I will start by writing the name of the feature and then direct that feature to the specific attribute from where I would like to pull this value. As you can see, this formula has now been inserted in the brackets over here, which means uh, the value for this specific requirement will be pulled in from the attribute pulse. And this is something that you have modeled uh, in your feature model in pure variance. Right. Now, moving on, we saw how can we actually restrict our requirements and how can we add calculations to it where we can pull the values uh, that we have modeled before. I will now take you to how, do, how does the preview of a variance specific requirement document look like. In order to do that, on the right hand side, you can see that I have the option to select a variant. Right? So I will just click on that and select a specific variant, which is Highlight USA in this case. After selecting the variant, I will just click on the preview icon. After doing so, you will be able to have a preview of what your 100% document is going to look like. As you can see on the left hand side, all the requirements which will be a part of the variant highlight USA have been highlighted, whereas others have been grayed out. What you can also notice here is that the formula we had previously inserted while adding calculations has also pulled this value. And now you can see that value appears here in your preview. Now, moving on, after having a look at the preview, I would now want to generate a variance specific requirement document. In order to do that, I have to perform a transformation. Pure variance allows you to have two different kinds of transformations with code Pima. So we will first have a look at the first transformation type, which is enumeration transformation or enum transformation. Again, in order to do that, first I will select my variant which is Highlight USA, and then click on the pencil icon to directly go to my uh, web client over here, which is the web integration. So on the left hand side, you can see that my configuration space where all the variant models are stored is open. And now I will click on the Run Transformation icon, and from the drop down, I will select Code Beamer Enum and click on Start Job. While the job is being done over here, once a successful transformation is performed, you will receive a message. So I go back to Code Beamer and just refresh. Over here, you will see that a new field called Pure Variance has been created. And after changing the view, you will be now able to see that a new column Pure Variance over here will show you which of the requirements in your 150% specification document is responsible for the highlight USA variant or is responsible for your American market. So this was how you can perform an enumeration transformation. Moving on, we will now have a look at the second type of transformation that Pure Variance supports with CodeBeamer. And the second type of transformation is the working set transformation. Let's have a look at how does the working set transformation move works so over here as you can see uh, on my right hand side i have selected a variant that is highlight usa and i will directly click on the pencil icon to go to my web client now there is another thing that web client enables you to do is as i expand and have a look at all of my features you will see here that I have a feature called LED and it has an attribute called pulse, right? And this value is 100 at the moment, which is also the value in my 150% document. But for just this specific variant, I would like to change the value to 120. So this is not affecting my superset architecture, but this value is only for this specific variant. Now I will once again, click on the transformation icon and run the transformation from the drop down i this time i'm going to select the code beamer working set transformation 
after selecting that i will start the job this is called start job for a specific reason because while the transformation is being performed you can still keep on working in the background after the successful transformation i will go to my working set and navigate to highlight usa which is a new working set that has been created post the transformation and after clicking on that i have now received my 100% variant copy and over here you will also be able to see that because i changed the value from 100 to 120 for this specific variant i also get notified over here that the value has been updated for this specific working copy Okay, so what I demonstrated now were the two different kinds of transformations that pure variance support. But moving on, I would now like to talk about another concept that is co-evolution with Code Beamer. Over here, I would like to show you what happens if you make changes to your product line or if you make uh, changes to your variant copy. Right. So first off, we have a product line. In this case, we call it 150% T0. After performing a transformation, all the data also goes to the update reference copy as well as you also get a variant A T0, which is your current working copy. Now, let's say that I wanted to make any changes to my current working copy, which I did in the previous example where I changed the value of one of the attributes specifically for the American market. Right? So I have made some variant modification. And after doing that, the new variant copy is called T0++. But due to certain circumstances, I would now like to make modifications in my product line as well. So now I have a new product line, which is called 150% T1. Now let's say you want a working copy, which is updated with all the changes that you have performed in your variant, as well as the modifications that you have performed in your product line. So first, after the transformation, you will receive an update reference copy where all the new assets that you added to your product line will get updated here. And after that, in order to achieve a new variant copy, which consists of all of the modifications made in your uh, variant T0++ as well as 150% T1, we will make use of the compare and merge functionality. And with the help of two-way merge, we will finally be able to achieve our variant A T1 working copy. So this is the concept of co-evolution with CodeBeamer. Why do you think is it helpful? So first off, it is helpful uh, for changes that needs to be done for a specific variant alone. So you can just make the changes in the specific variant. And second off, if you are making any of the changes in your product line, then all of these changes can be merged together to achieve a new variant copy. And this is a capability of pure variants that goes beyond ISO 26580. So now I'm going to demonstrate a short example, which will show you the same thing that I explained in the concept here. So now we are going to generate a variant specific requirement, which is a working set transformation, but with update support. In order to do that, let's start with selecting a variant. So first I select a variant, which is Highlight Canada, and again, click on the pencil icon to go to my web client. On the left hand side, you can see that I have the Highlight Canada variant, and then I will click on Run Transformation, and click on Code Beamer working set and then start the job. So the difference here is that my update support has been enabled in pure variants. After the successful transformation, as you can see, when I click on working set over here, two separate uh, working sets have been created. So one is called Highlight Canada Update Reference, whereas other one is Highlight Canada, which is the 100% weighted copy that we would have gotten after this transformation. Let's say now I want to make some changes to my 150% architecture or 150% requirement document. I will pick a requirement and then start by editing it. So I've taken the first requirement and I'm making some changes in this requirement and I have saved it. What I will do now is I'll go to the update reference folder to show you that the changes I made in my 150% are now being reflected here. So we do 
get notified that we have made some changes in the 150%. I now went to my 100% uh, highlight calendar copy, which I received after transformation. And now I am making some variant modifications over here. So I pick a requirement and I start modifying this requirement. And then I save it. So as you can see, what have I done now? First, I went to the 150% document, if you remember from the concept slide before. So I went to the 150% document, which is my product line. I made some changes to it. And you saw that those changes then started getting reflected on the update reference uh, working set. And then next, what I did was I opened my specific 100% variant copy and made changes to that. Right, so I have done my variant modification and product line modification at this stage. Now I will go back to uh, pure variants and in Highlight Canada, I change my variant selections. So I decide that Foglet as a feature is not needed anymore. And after doing that, I will once again perform a working set transformation. Right, so after a successful transformation, then I will go back uh, to Code Pima. And over here, what you see now is the second variant copy that I have received. So from the concept slide, this variant copy is something that I will call T0++. Right? So over here, you will see that requirement 1.2 has been updated on this variant copy, whereas the changes that we made in 150% has still not been updated here. So as you can see in the bracket, it still says that this change is only reflected in the update reference folder and not here, not yet, right? So now we will make use of the compare and merge functionality in order to bring these changes from the parent copy to the current working copy. So in order to do that, I will start with utilizing the merge from parent branch functionality. I will click on it, right? And then first I'll click on apply all. And then I will deselect this because it is already reflected on my current working copy. And because I deselected fog lights, I will delete every requirement related to fog light for this specific branch. After doing that, I will click on merge. And once I do that, this is the new working copy that I have received, wherein all the changes which were a part of my product line modification, as well as a part of my variant modification have come together. I have merged all those changes and this is my latest working copy, which we call P1. Uh, from the concept slide. So this is how Pure Variance can support you to map your Code Beamer assets, to have a preview of what is your variance specific document going to look like, and the two different types of transformations that it supports, which is enumeration transformation and working set transformation. Whereas within working set transformation, you can go ahead without enabling update support, as well as with enab enabling update support, which we just saw in this example. So now I would like to hand it over to Shivani to see if we have any questions here. Thank you, Rachna. So that was pretty informative. So let's see if we have any questions here. Uh, so we have a question, um, which trackers do we support here? So that is a good question. and. Thank you for it. So at the moment, we support the test cases, the test sets, the customer requirement specifications, as well as the system requirement specifications. OK, thank you. And yeah, so you can use the chat box to post any questions. OK, so I think uh, of we have no more questions so we've reached towards end of the uh session today uh thank you all for joining and yeah have a nice day thank you so much everyone